I'm gonna walk you through this trip and explain to you exactly how I managed to maintain my diet and my training while traveling. All right, so people always ask me, Brandon, how do you stay in such incredible shape year round? And you know, before the lockdown happened, I used to travel a lot, once or twice a month, I would have to go on a trip for, for that business. And in this vlog, I'm gonna walk you through a trip I recently took with my girl, we went to Chicago, and I'm gonna walk you through this trip and explain to you exactly how I managed to maintain my diet and my training while traveling. All right, so pro tip number one when you're traveling for staying in shape, the most stressful part of traveling, for me at least, is the flight. I hate airports, I can't stand them. And I fly first class most of the time. One of the things I do, if I'm flying on a long trip, then I'll just fast. I'll either like do a day fast, like when I went to um, Australia, I just fasted the whole flight. Or if I go to LA, I'll usually fast. You know, from LA to here, it's like six hours. Or when I go to London, you know, I usually go to London a few times a year. I usually fast that day on the flight. Now, I was only going to Chicago, it's only a few hours away. So I did not fast, I ate a big, keto breakfast so I'm nice and full when I'm traveling because when you're going through security and you know going to the airport like again it's stressful for me and I don't want to think about food and I'll be more irritable if I'm hungry another pro tip is to bring an empty water bottle put it in your carry-on fill it up at the water fountains that's why you don't have to pay five dollars for some water or you don't have to bug the plane waitress all right bring a water bottle fill it up before you get on a plane now you got a bunch of water another thing I like to do when I'm on the plane is I like to get a lot of work done. I don't use the internet or anything. I used to like just read or work on something. On this trip to Chicago, I probably just read the whole time. You know, we had masks on and stuff. Yeah, I like to get work done or I like to read. Another pro tip, this is really gonna help you with jet lag and it's gonna help make sure that you keep your training regimen consistent while you're traveling. I immediately check in hotel and then work out. So we were staying at the W, downtown Chicago, checked in the bags, great room, sweet as usual checked all my bags then went and trained this does two things it one it helps you with jet lag but it's also it helps you stay consistent i don't really unpack i just change clothes and i like to train immediately knock it out and work out at the hotel gym now most hotel gyms suck this gym wasn't as bad it had more machines and stuff but you know the weights only go up to 50 and it's all always dumbbells so you just have to go you know higher reps less rest in between sets as well that's a tip you can use when you only have access to light weights just make sure you rest less in between each set and what happens is you you you, you notice you'll still get like a really good workout so like 30 second rest in between sets higher reps and you'll you you'll work the muscle in a different way than maybe you're used to and it's not it's not a bad thing to switch it up sometimes right so then we went out to eat a few times and once we went out with my sister and here's the thing when you're eating out right when you're traveling and you have a diet to maintain a lot of people will be like oh I'll, I'll, I'll get back on my diet when I get home or you know you can't do that you want to stay consistent so what I do is depending on where I'm going sometimes I, I bring a scale with me in my bag you don't have to do that that's over the top but you can order something a lot of times if you go to a nice restaurant you know they, they they'll tell you how much a steak ways and you can put that in my fitness pal man keep just make sure you hit your macros right and maybe it's off a little bit maybe you're estimating because you know what kind, you don't know what kind of sauces or whatever the chef used but you want to at least stay in the habit and stay in the range it's easy for me because i'm keto so i just don't eat the carbs right i'll order some fish or some steak and they'll usually substitute uh, side for me like oh yeah i don't want the potatoes can i get cream spinach or, or something like that but I hit all my macros every day. It's not the big deal that everyone thinks it is. Just ask for substitutions, you know, and um, you can ask the waiter how much stuff weighs, and how much does that fish weigh? And it'll be like, uh, I don't know. And I'm like, can you ask the chef? And he'll be like, yeah, then he'll come back and tell you. It's usually not a problem. Now, the chef might be guessing. Again, it's hard to stay as accurate unless you bring your scale, <laughs> your scale with you, right? You don't have to do that. You know, but as long as you're in the range, you're in the ballpark, I think that's that's good for while you're traveling because you're not you're not a nomad, right? You're gonna come back home. You just wanna stay in the range while you're traveling. I'm from Chicago. I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago. I was actually born on the south side in University of Chicago Hospital. But I wasn't gonna show her the south side. God no. I didn't want I wasn't gonna take her down there with Chief Keith and them. 
right? So I wanted to show her the good part of Chicago. I want to give her a good impression. So I didn't show her where I was from. I showed her, you know, a lot of downtown Chicago. Chicago has a really interesting history. So we went on a boat tour of Chicago. I feel like that's one of the best ways to see the city because we have a huge river that goes down Chicago, the Chicago River, and we have Lake Michigan. Everyone who wants to see Chicago should go on a boat tour of the city. It's beautiful. People come from all over the world to see the, the, the beautiful buildings and the, and the amazing skyline we have in Chicago. It wasn't always this way. In 1871, the whole city burnt down. It's called Chicago Fire. Within two days, 17 thousand buildings burnt to the ground 17 thousand buildings that's a lot of buildings hundreds of people died and it seemed like my beloved city was ruined however it was actually one of the best things that happened to the city it's actually one of the best things that ever happened to america because prior to the fire almost all the cities were made of concrete and wood and it was like that in most cities around the world and after the whole city burned down chicagoans you know we're tough people resilient people and they said you know what we're going to build the city back we're going to build it back and we're going to build it back stronger than ever and they said you know what this time let's not make the buildings out of wood let's make the buildings out of steel and when they started making the buildings out of steel they realized they can make the buildings a lot taller a lot higher and the first skyscraper was actually built in Chicago. And they started building all the cities like that. So when you see a skyscraper in any city, know that that came from Chicago. We did that. As we were going through the city, seeing all these magnificent buildings, the, the, the beautiful architecture, to know that it came from actually devastation. Like it's actually the devastation. Without the fire, there wouldn't be these big skyscrapers in Chicago, all this beautiful architecture. In fact, we wouldn't have skyscrapers, you know, anywhere. Eventually somebody might have figured it out, but I'm just saying it was a catalyst. And I want you to think about that. You know, we're going through a tragedy now. A lot of things are different. There's a, there's a lockdown. There's uh, people getting sick. I can't say why because of YouTube algorithm, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. You may be going through something personal right now. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you like lost a loved one. Maybe uh, things are not going well for you. You got two options. You can let that consume you. You can dwell on it. You can sit around crying about it. I'm not saying you shouldn't cry about it. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but you can't stay there, right? You gotta, you gotta do like Chicago did, man, and say, you know what? This is gonna make me stronger. I'm gonna come back from this, and I'm gonna be bigger, stronger, and better. It's the same thing, you know, when my father killed himself. I was in my early 20s, and, you know, looking back at that, I almost hate to find a silver lining out, out of something so tragic, but the silver lining was it forced me to grow up and it forced me to find ways to make money, support my family, to take care of my mom, my sister, to take care of you know the people I care about and myself because I didn't have a safety net no more. It, forced, it kind of forced me to become a man and it's a big part of who I am today. And without my father's suicide, without that tragedy, I don't know that I'd be as successful as I am now because it, it didn't force me. Same thing with Chicago. I don't know if Chicago would have been the magnificent city it is today had it not been for that fire. Think about that in your life. It's like when you're training, what happens? You build, you break the muscle down. You lift weights, the muscle, you tear some of the muscle fibers. It does what? It grows back what? Stronger. Yeah, it hurts. It's painful, but your muscles are stronger as a result. You can be the same way. That's just something I wanted you guys to think about. Every time I take somebody to Chicago and I take them on one of these tours, I, I just think about that, man, you know, because it's, it's an important part of our history. And it can be an important part of yours. You're going to go through some tragedy. So I hope you found that helpful and useful how when you're traveling, if, if you do people still travel, comment below. Are you traveling? Have you been on a plane? Have you gone anywhere since the whole lockdown? And also make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to follow my adventures in real time, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm pretty active there. I post every day and I, I always got a lit story up doing something cool, something awesome. And if you DM me, I, I, I might respond. Maybe, probably not, <laughs> but maybe. Follow me on Instagram, man. Let's see what happens, all right? Love y'all, peace.